Welcome. I'm Barb Edson. I lead marketing for, for CDK, and I'm here with Peter Kahn, the Senior Director of Research and Insights here at CDK. We are so excited today to have a chance to talk to you about some new research we did about the Trendsetter's Guide to Automotive Retail. So Peter, tell me a little bit about the research. I will do that, but first of all, I can't tell you how fantastic it is to be here with thousands of humans. I mean, this, <laughs> this is really great to be at this show. I'm happy to be here. And let's talk a little bit about um, a study that we did back in late December, early January. You know, think about it, over the last two years, it is really kind of like a Dickens story. It's been the best of times, it's been the worst of times. And what we want to understand from dealers is, you know, what over the last 24 months have been the biggest challenges that you all have faced? Um, based on those challenges, what'd you do? How'd you respond? to these challenges. Um, what were the things that you did that worked operationally, financially, and overall, what was the, had the most positive impact? What changes that you made are gonna become permanent? And uh, how do you feel about the next 24 months? And what are you going to do to respond to the growing challenges, the existing challenges and the growing challenges over the next two years? So that was the purpose of the research. Great, well th thanks Peter. So why don't you talk to our audience here at NEDA a little bit about, well, first let's you know, start with why Trendsetter? Why are we calling it the Trendsetter Guide? Yeah, um, so just a little bit about the survey itself. We ended up getting about close to 500 folks that responded. For those folks out there and on the camera, thank you very much for taking the survey. It means a lot. Uh, we also interviewed about 20 de uh, dealer principals and owners to get some more understanding behind the numbers. Now, Peter, was that just CDK customers or all customers? All customers, yeah. You know, this is about the industry. It's not about CDK. It's not about any specific supplier. It's like, it's all about dealers and what they did. Um, with regards to trendsetters, we wanted to get a sense about dealers' attitude when it came to dealing with the pandemic, dealing with inventory shortages, and how they responded. And so we ask a question, we do this often, are you one of the first dealers to try something new? Are you the first to try something new? Are you kind of in the middle or do you, is your dealership a little bit slower in reacting to change? And so what we take are the folks that say, I'm the first to try something new or I'm among the first to try something new. And we call those folks the trendsetters. And so we broke those folks out from the rest and we wanted to see what they did compared to the overall dealers and learn from those folks as well. How do we know their trendsetters what they're implementing, of course, but then did they have some success relative to what they implemented and from a performance standpoint? Yeah, there's some really interesting things that came out of the data um, that I think a lot of dealers can learn from. But I want to first talk about the challenges that dealers went through. And, you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm talking to an audience that already knows this, but there's some nuances there as well with the challenges and then how folks responded. So obviously the biggest problem has been inventory. 82% of the dealers they responded to our survey, said inventory was either extremely or very challenging. Um, now, when we talk about trendsetters, it turns out, interestingly enough, only 68% of those folks said that it was challenging for them compared to that 82%. 68% those that didn't think it was challenging, they're obviously doing something. Uh, they are. Yeah, what are they doing? I want to I want to talk about the other side of the coin, which is folks that are a little bit slower in reacting to change. 100% said that they uh, were challenged by inventory. So you have this interesting spread opening up between folks that are very open to change and folks that maybe didn't lean in that hard when when they were hit with the challenges that we were hit with. So inventory, and in fact, not just inventory, but uh, staffing shortages, we came out at 44%, okay. um, was a big challenge. And then interestingly enough, and this really affects fixed operations, parts shortages have been a real challenge. Okay. Um, so those have been the big challenges over the last two years. Okay, but I know our audience really wants to know though, they're challenges, but what do those trendsetters do to make a difference and have a bigger impact than their competitive set in the marketplace? So let's talk about the things that dealers did and then what impact they had. And we'll break out the trendsetters and so things that we can learn from. It's interesting because, again, you could either lean back or lean in. Yep. And those trendsetters really leaned in and leaned in hard. And so where do they lean in? They leaned in in a couple of areas. Number one, uh, investing in digital technologies. That's been a huge thing, not just for trendsetters, but for all dealers. Uh, dealers started to think about, gosh, you know, the only way I can interact with my customers really is through their website and through the tools on the website. And so that, they really put a lot of investment and time in thinking about how do folks come to me and how do I make it easy for them to come to me? So. 
Uh, making it easy is a big one, and digital retailing obviously is a, is a way of making it easy. In fact, this, the, the biggest thing that folks did really was service pickup and drop off. 57% of dealers said, we're gonna institute service pickup and drop off. And again, that makes it easy for a shopper who's afraid to come down. Uh, you know, the dealership comes down, picks up the car, makes it easy for them to do that. And mobile repair order was another thing that folks uh, implemented. That had a somewhat level of a su success. Okay. Um, so those are some of the things on the fixed operation side. Again, focusing on convenience, making it easy, using digital tools to get customers to feel safe, and also um, continue to transact with the dealership. So let's let's unpack a little bit on the digital sales process. You talked about purchasing online, but you know the whole modern retailing integrated workflow is not just about sort of doing it online, but making that omni-channel experience. And so talk a little bit more about that. It's not, of course, we want to engage digitally, but we also want to make sure we have that sort of seamless experience from digital into in-store. Yep, so yep. unpack that a little bit for us. Yeah, you bet. Um, we did a companion study around the same time uh, in collaboration with Nata Academy. Uh, we call that, for lack of a better term, friction points. Um, and it turns out that most folks are going to go to the dealership. 92% of the folks that we surveyed, and we surveyed over 1,000 car buyers, 92% uh, actually bought the car at the dealership. Um, and the biggest problem that those folks had, uh, if there wasn't a good investment in both process as well as technology, is that they ended up waiting. And if they waited, their net promoter score, their satisfaction level with their experience dropped in half compared to the folks that didn't have to wait. Okay. Um, so what, you know, the takeaway from that one really is, is how do you look at your sales process and how do you put digital in place and make it easier and more convenient for the shopper to engage with your store um, and do as much as they feel comfortable with at the comfort of their own home or their office or what have you, and then come in and do, finish the final transaction. And hopefully when they come in, everything is there. The paperwork is there. Um, the dealership knows them, they know what kind of car they're going to buy, and they can get this job done in under an hour. So you were going into some of the fixed ops areas, and it seemed like some pretty, you know, uh, pretty quick fixes all dealers could have, yep. like pick up, drop off. So let's go back to, okay, we've purchased the car, now in the servicing area, a lot of great uh, content insights you've talked about. Yep, so again, uh, mobile repair order, while it didn't have as much uh, adoption as, say, the front end, the, the digital sales side, um, it had pretty good adoption. The interesting thing, though, is the, those folks who said, you know, we did mobile repair order, we did photos and videos and service, we did pick up and drop off, that those really worked out well for them. And somewhere around the high 80s, 84, 85% say, we're going to do this in the future. So, you know, they, interestingly enough, the customers are now sold on the idea of getting this kind of convenience. Um, we had one dealer tell us, he said, you know, Things are just not going to go back the way they used to be. Customers just don't want to revert back. So you put candy in front of folks and they're going to eat it. That's all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, the consumer expectations have changed dramatically. And those, you know, what, what you're telling us is those dealers that have leaned in to those change and been aggressive, that they're going to, they're reaping the rewards. And so, you know, I think you noted earlier that there's some financial performance. We're seeing those dealers that have really leaned in are getting better financial performance, correct? Yeah. Um, what, uh, we asked a couple of questions around, number one, what did you do? And then we said, okay, operationally, what kind of impact did that have? And then financially, what kind of impact did that have? And then overall, what was the positive impact on it? And again, things that made it easy for the shopper, convenient, um, easy to work with the business, had the biggest uh, lift. Obviously, reducing costs. In fact, I want to say 97% okay. of all dealers we surveyed said reducing costs had some kind of fin positive financial impact. That's in floor plan, that's cutting advertising to zero. There is some question around doing pay pan, play plan, play pan changes. Yeah, I'll get that word out. It's dry here in the desert. So. Yeah, it is. But those kinds of things, again, reducing costs and making it more convenient were the real financial wins for the folks that, again, the trendsetters and other dealers as well. That's great. So dealers are saving money and providing a better consumer experience. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It's a win-win, right? So there's all this hype in the industry about electric vehicle, direct to consumer, and we believe at CDK absolutely that the dealer will be the dominant channel. But of course, the OEMs are coming in with EV and direct to consumer. But talk a little bit about that and how dealers were thinking about that. In the interviews we did, dealers really stressed how they were very focused on improving customer experience. In fact, 85% said 
that they are going to continue to focus on customer experience and making it better. And what does that really mean other than, again, convenience and a friction-free experience? It means building trust and transparency. And so when we think about trust and transparency and you know your local dealership, uh, Joe Bob down at ABC Motors, is that if I'm going to buy a car, you know, I may buy a really great brand from, a, from one of the manufacturers, but I want to get it from Joe Bob. Uh, and if I have an issue with my vehicle, I can go back to Joe Bob, and that's a person, that's a phase, and that's somebody I can work with. So dealers are always going to play that very important role of having that relationship, and they understand that. And so again, taking the pain out of dealing with the dealership and getting the vehicle, um, bringing up that trust and transparency and building that relationship, that's what's going to make dealers really successful and build that partnership with the OEM. That's terrific. And actually, like I said, we have additional research that really points out, actually those OEMs that have established distribution channels with dealerships actually have a differentiated value proposition of, a, against those that are just direct to consumer. And we've got that data. We've done that with a leading global consulting firm. So we know even by 2030, nearly 83% of all vehicles are going to be sold through the dealer channels. Those OEMs that are traditional OEMs are going to be using this advantage that they already have of the dealership. So we're incredibly excited about that opportunity for dealers in the marketplace. In the shopper study we did, over 1,100 shoppers, 92% of them came into the dealership. Other work we've done, people are going to continue to come to the dealership. They, they want to shake somebody's hand, they want to look them in the eye, they want to test drive the car, they want to get that new car eye. That's what dealers can offer. So it's a really great, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship, it's a good relationship. I think most of the manufacturers understand that. There's a, you know, there's been some experiments on direct online, but the net promoter, the satisfaction level that we got between folks coming to the dealership and buying a car and folks that did it all online was almost equal. That's awesome. So, Peter, we've got just a few minutes left here. Any last-minute insights on this Trendsetter Guide, which is our first time releasing this, and we're going to do this on an annual basis. So we're really excited about sort of providing that insight to all dealers, not just CDK dealers, but all dealers out there to learn from each other and provide that community of who's doing the best practices. So any last insights? Yeah, um, a couple thoughts I have. Number one, it was proven that if you lean in, you're going to get better results. And so don't be afraid to embrace change. We've been hit with unprecedented challenges, something that nobody's ever experienced before, and we've had to react. And there were trends on the horizon that people have embraced, and there's no going back. So go forward, lean forward. Number two is train, train, train. Change your, your staff from a sales model to an experience model. I love that. Train them to do that. Think about, again, trust and transparency and improving that and focus around the shopper. And doing those types of things, you're going to be very successful in the years ahead.